Well, welcome everybody to the September version of the online program for the alumni of the Sunshine Coast Health Center up here in Powell River, British Columbia. And this month, uh, we're going to talk again about this conference that Sunshine Coast sponsored. Uh, officially called, uh, well, basically, How to Find Meaning in the Workplace. And some of the speakers were quite interesting because they talked a lot more than just the workplace. So this month on the uh, online program, uh, we'll talk about four speakers, uh, one per week, and give you an idea of some of the things they said. And uh, I've chosen them specifically because I think they'll help you in your recovery. So we'll begin with Dr. Todd Cashton. Now, Dr. Cashton is a psychologist at George Mason University, and he's done some really fascinating work all about meaning and purpose. His version's a little different. So here's an experiment that he conducted uh, with a bunch of people drinking alcohol. Okay. Now, unlike a lot of experiments, which are done in laboratory settings, he uses something called real world research, which is a, a one of the more recent developments in research in psychology. And what he did in this particular experiment is he uh, gave the participants this beeper. And then he sets the beeper off at specific times. And when they hear the beeper, uh, because they're just out in the community doing their shtick, right? And when they hear the beeper, then what they do is they take out their notebook and they write down what they're feeling. And so he beeps them like eight times a day. And then he also gives them instructions. For example, before, if you have a plan to go to the bar, before you go to the bar, write down what you're, what's going on with you, what you're feeling, okay? So this is the sort of experimental design. Then you take all of this information that they've done for many, many days, and then you start sifting through it to see if you can find some common patterns in, in what each of these people is feeling at specific times in the day. And, and before they're going to the bar and all that kind of stuff. And then you also measure, you ask them, well, how much did you drink at the bar? or How much did you drink, you know, wherever you were going to drink? Okay, so that's the basic design. So he gets all this information and puts it all together. And this is what he finds out. And this is really kind of interesting. What he finds out is that people are feeling various emotions, which makes sense, right? So some people are mad, some people are happy, some people are sad you know, various, various emotions. And statistically, uh, when you put all this together, he could not find any real link between the intensity of the emotion and the amount of alcohol consumed, which is really kind of interesting, right? Because the usual thing we think of is, oh, I got in a big argument with my uh, spouse and I went off to the bar and got drank and got drunk. Okay, well, that's, according to Dr. Caston's research, that's not actually what he found. What he found uh, was that the actual link between the amount of alcohol consumed and the emotions was not the intensity of the emotion, but rather whether the person experiencing the emotions could actually uh, talk in detail about what they were feeling. And if they could talk in detail about what they were feeling, they drank significantly less than people who couldn't figure out what was going on. And so he would give us this example of, uh, well, the politically correct version of what he actually said was if someone were to, uh, they were just on their way to the bar and they would write down what they were feeling, they would write something like, I feel crappy. And it's just this general comment about what they're feeling. It's not very specific. They didn't really have a good grasp of what was actually going on for them. Were they, uh, were they angry? What were they angry at? Uh, how did that anger differ from other feelings of anger they may have had? They couldn't do that. There's just this general feeling, oh, I feel crappy. And maybe they were sad, but they couldn't figure that out. Or maybe just, they felt upset, and they did, but they couldn't put any words to it. In other words, as, as Dr. Cashton described it, they could not find meaning in the emotions they felt. 
And if they could not find any meaning in the emotions they felt, then they would drink significantly more than someone who could find meaning in the emotions they felt. And this is really kind of an interesting comment because it's got to do more with meaning and purpose than with intensity of the emotion. And, when, uh, and Dr. Kasten's done uh, experiments with uh, other people and one of the common denominators, no matter what, for example, traumatized people, he found again the sort of same link. If the person with the trauma could find meaning in what they were feeling, then it was, the trauma was less of a problem. So that's interesting, eh? In other words, if you have this self-awareness, if you can make sense of what you're going through, then probably, you know, there's going to be a lot less of the substances consumed, right? So it's a good lesson for you, right? And if you remember your time at SCHC, do you remember all of those, all the amount of time we spent on what are you feeling, right? How do you make sense of this? You know, trying to help you pinpoint uh, specifically what was going on for you. And we did this for a reason because in Dr. Kashtan's research is some of the research that backs up this whole approach is that if you can find meaning in it, eh, then maybe the substances become less of a problem. Anyway, that was Dr. Kashtan. Very interesting fellow. In fact, if you're interested, just Google Todd Kashtan and there are even some research papers he's published on his website. And he wrote this book called Curious, which is an interesting book. Anyway, that's it for this week, and we'll see you next week uh, with uh, another issue.